You mentioned that the ACC and the Big 12 are different. How so? Because I really think people want you to unpack that. Yeah, I mean, in general, Big 12 is, is fast. Uh, if you're just talking about in terms of, of play. And um, there's a lot of no huddle. There's a lot of different – it's more air raid. You pass a lot more in Big 12. In the ACC, when I was there, at least uh, Virginia, we ran a lot a lot more. And don't get me wrong, Big 12, we still run, especially Oklahoma. We have running backs for days. Um, but I don't know. I just felt like it was more like uh, downhill running. Um not we didn't really run in the ACC. We, it wasn't a lot of outside zones. It was more, it was more inside. You know what I'm saying? You just, you, 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 I, in my opinion, maybe that's just because I was a guard and it was a little bit different. I was always inside rather than outside, but um, it, it just felt like it was a more like in close, like in the box type game when it comes to that. And Big Twelve was more, you know, you have those quarterbacks that can air it out, and um, you got people like C.D. Lamb and wide receivers and everybody, you know what I'm saying? They're just so talented. And don't get me wrong, ACC has the same thing. And, I mean, in terms of defense, there's always an argument who has better defense, Big 12, I mean, uh, Big 10, ACC, or SEC. Um, you know, I got the chance to go against some great, great players in the ACC um, at guard going against these D tackles. And, I mean, everyone has their own opinion. Uh, and I, I think it was a great – experience for me to be able to get both of them big 12 and acc and also sec i mean i played against lsu and south carolina so that was a good experience as well did you play um, against yeah, clemson that, did you play against clemson? uh uh no we didn't okay play okay yeah okay well and see that was where i was going to go next was knowing what you saw against lsu right and and knowing what what just a, a eye-opener that was for a lot of Oh, you fans that thought the gap was closing and whatnot. What did you see against guys like Tyler Shelvin and uh, and Rashad? I want to say Rashad Lawrence. I, I might be messing up his last name. I should have checked. That's on me. But what was the what was the big difference for you with their their three man front and their edge rushes with Clavon Jason and whatnot, as opposed yeah. to anybody else that you'd ever faced? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, when I when I was at when I was at UVA and we played South Carolina, mm. I was in. Like I said, so I really didn't have to worry about really outside rushers. I was going against the bigger dudes, and I've always been the type of person. Like Kenlaw, like, did you get J- Javon Kenlaw, or is that before you? Oh uh, no, that he was he was there when okay. I was there. I don't know if he, I don't know if he was playing. I really don't remember who. I, okay. I I can't recall who was the tackle. It was either him or somebody else. He might have sat down, sat out that game okay. with the depot. But um, no, yeah, like I said, yeah, uh, against South Carolina. It was more, I was inside, so it was more like I was just wor- working on, you know, moving people. We ran a lot that game. Moving people downfield, getting to the linebackers, and I pride myself in that, being able to get to the second level. Um, and, you know, here when I was at LSU, when we played against LSU, uh, number 18, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but uh, he's, I mean, athlete, <laughs> great, great guy. And he knows, and one thing I would say is he knows how to adjust. Um, I was watching film on him for weeks and a lot of things I saw on film, he wasn't doing in the game and, you know, hats off to him and me unable to adjust that and knowing that he gives those tells and to change it. Um, Cause it was such a big game. Cause I, I'm the type of person I, I'm a, I'm gonna study you inside and out when it comes to film and I'm gonna know the defense. Uh, Cause if you, like I always say, if you know the defense and what the D tackle DN or whatever is going to do, before they do it, you all you already beat them. You know what I'm saying? And it's all about that confidence and knowing, uh, knowing what they're gonna do. But like I said, I think it's a little bit different. They were definitely two different teams, South Carolina and uh, LSU. Um, but he was definitely he was definitely a good player, and it was good. It was good going against him and being able to experience that. Like I said, uh, and against I mean when you're going when I went who who'd I go against and uh because I did play tackle in the ACC for I think two games I played right tackle for a couple plays but I don't recall who I who I went against um but like I said it, it was it was really <clears throat> it was really just a great experience you know what I'm saying and I, being able to to get and to play against all these great players and and, and learn you know what I'm saying how to how to tweak my technique to to beat them and do everything like that because it is at the end of the day it's a game you got to really study your opponent you know what i'm saying in order to beat them and um so yeah i'm just appreciative 
So it was Clavon Chase, and that was number 18, and, and, yeah. and he is yeah. considered a, a higher draft pick. So, I mean, you went against one of the best in college football last year uh, across the board. Yeah. I had a couple more questions for, uh, for you. The first one was, what do you think Eric Swenson's upside is? Because there, were, there was chatter about whether or not that dude was actually good enough to make up the difference at left tackle after how good Oklahoma had been in years past. And then yeah. he's battling with you, so obviously, you know, Coach Beatenbo thought the world of him. But what do you think his upside is? Uh, he's a smart guy. One thing I would say, he's he's very smart and he understands, like I, like what I just said about the defense, he understands and you really have to be able to break that down. I always use an example. Um, you really have to read. Now, when you walk up to the line, right, you got to know whether it's a 3-2, 4-2, 3-3, three, two, two, three, three, whatever. You got to know the front. You, so you got to look at the linebacker depth. Then you got to look at the safety. See where his alignment is, and you gotta look up the corner. And if you look at those, you only have about, I'd say, eight to ten seconds to really peep all that and process. If they move, what do you have to do? Things like that. But he he can really slow down the game in his head. And you know, I used him, you know, as not not so much a mentor, but someone that could really, you know, he played left tackle. I've never played left tackle. So he really helped me, you know, slow down the game kind of when I got there and helped me with the plays that he's been learning for three years. And I'm, I've just been studying for two months, you know, and uh, it just, it, it, he, he's definitely, and he, he's a good leader. I feel like uh, he can definitely step up this year and I hope he has a great year this year. I uh, wish none but the best for him, but um, uh, he's a, he's a really good player when it comes to, uh, scheme and concept and knowing the defense and knowing the field in a whole as a whole well I said I had two uh now I got two more because now you just brought up something else knowing what you know about Swenson yep. what what do you what do you think of Bray Walker because that dude was was it coming in in that 2018 class everybody was very excited about him and we all thought he was going to be playing the position that you ended up starting at just left tackle. Yeah. And then when he came out for a couple of games at right guard, we were going, okay, what are we missing? So so what are we missing about Bray Walker? I have nothing but good things to say about Bray. Bray uh, Bray's a different cat. That's my that's my boy. Um, you know, I think a lot of times he looks up to me. He's, you know, he he's such an athlete. Like he that man is like he's physically gifted. And you can ask anybody on the team, they'll say the same thing. Dude is physically gifted, and he's going to be a great player one day. I know he is. Um, he's working. He's working so hard this offseason. I've, I've tapped in with him a couple times, seen how he's been, and he's ready to get after it. Um, and he's, I mean, I, like I said, I have nothing bad to say about him. When it's his time, it's his time. That's all I can say right now because I can't really give you all inside scoop of what's happening, anything like that. But I just know. This year, he's really going to step up. And, um, yeah, this year is Bray's time. So, I'm proud of the boy. Okay, so my last question, I'm going to put you in a pickle. You get What's one up? You get one quarterback. You get one. Yeah. You got Bryce Perkins or you got Jalen Hurts. Who are you taking? Uh, uh, I have to go with my boy B. Perk. Ooh, okay. And the reason is just because I played with Bryce – a little longer. I know him. Me and him were roommates for two years. That's my boy. Not, not even that. Like, he's just different. Like, he's so slept on me. He's just different when it comes to, like, and don't get me wrong, Jalen is too. I mean, Jalen's playing at the, the highest of the high. I mean, he his his winning record is crazy. He's been in positions we all dreamed of being in. Um, but Bryce just has that different, like, I don't know. He just, he just, he sees the field so different. And, when he puts on that helmet and them shoulder pads, he's just a different man. Like, he's just cold. And I tell, me and him talk. We try to tap in, like, every single week, really get to talk. And it's just we're so ready for opportunity because both of us, I mean, even him, him breaking the school records and everything like that, he's still being slept on. And we just talk every day, just waiting for our time and being ready to be prepared for when we do get that time uh, and show out. And, I, you know, like I said, I wish him nothing but the best. He's a great dude, great player. Um, I wish I could have played with him some more, but he, you know, hopefully in the NFL, when we get that chance, maybe we can get drafted to the same team. Nah, man. Hey, look, Mac Brown said UVA always got a shot because they got Bryce Perkins, and it turned out, yeah. you know, he was on to something, right? First UVA 
uh, team to represent in the conference championships is Matt Schwab. So I, I know about Bryce. I know about yeah. Bryce. And I'm glad yeah. you, uh, you've given your man some love. I, I appreciate that. And, and I understand where you're coming from. This is R.J. Proctor, a uh, graduate from the University of Virginia, which is no small feat, with a degree in sociology, was pursuing his master's at the University of Oklahoma, Big 12 title ring, college football playoff berth. He's go- he is going to show out on March 11th at his pro day at Everest Training Center. R.J., thanks so much, man. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, bro.